Say yes to new beginnings. Yes. Say yes to new standards of excellence. Yes. Say yes to engage in reportage with a difference. Yes. Introducing Yes International Magazine. The time to say yes to your dreams and aspirations is here. Before I take anything, let me just tell them briefly about my friend, my brother, K.O.K. -K, Esquire, Kamayo Onyekwe. No, Kamayo Modestus Onyekwe, Esquire. For those who may not know, yes, let me put it on record. Yes, K.O.K. -K is one of our most iconic actors. In fact, what I like most about K.O.K. -K is the fact that he has moved from zero to hero. You know, I knew when he went back to Unilag for a diploma course in philosophy, if I'm correct, then the degree program, then his master's, then K.O.K. -OK now went to do law, and K.O.K. -OK is still, he has continued to reinvent himself. K.O.K. -OK was one of those who made Nollywood what it is today, one of the pioneers was part of living in bondage even before the coming of living in bondage he had been part of uh Bassi and the company etc 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 so tonight we are honored we are privileged we are excited we are happy we are enchanted to have kok in our midst and we'll be drilling him you know to find out how he has been able to do it and how he all the things he did to be able to get to where he is today so once again kok you're welcome. So nice to have you. I'm very, I'm very, very uh, happy to be on this program tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Now, KOK, okay, I'd like to find out what, what has been happening to KOK. Well, um, thank you very much once again for having me on this program. I, I feel really honored to be on your platform. Um, first of all, you know, uh, I had a very ugly incident last week, Friday, and that's a week today. So this yeah. is the celebration of the hacking. <laughs> the, hack, the hacking of the <laughs> uh, Right now, I'm Instagram-less. <laughs> I am email-less. I don't have an Instagram. Wow. I see of those who think they are, they are smart, but unfortunately, uh, they can't be smarter than those of us who have chosen the right path. Uh, I'm here to recover my I'm here to recover my email and I did post a disclaimer to uh, several friends, well wishers, business associates, my platforms. So uh, it's quite a pleasure to be uh, to be here. And uh, my fans, my fans and followers would have also seen the advert you carried out to join us in this broadcast uh first of all let me thank all of them for the support and so on all this while and to also make on this broadcast that i am yet to recover my instagram and i'm yet to recover my emails so it is not advisable at this time to um, contact me on instagram or email please thank you for your following then what's been happening to KOK okay, um, at this time? Well, it's no longer news that I was called to the Nigerian bar as a barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria in September last year. To God be all the glory. Um, I'm happy being a lawyer. Um, yeah, a, lot of, a, lot, a lot has been happening because people have been asking, what is KOK okay going to do with law and entertainment? Well, I intend marrying both of them. And that's what I've been doing. 
and that we're going to come up with. So, but there is no need letting the cat out of the bag. Uh, let the cat remain in the bag. Uh, you will soon hear from me. I like that. I like that. I'm happy to see for those who have joined. It's my pleasure being here. Yes, I can see Fred and Martha. Thank you very much. I can see Abdusa Faga, the sort of the world. Thank you very much. I can see young guests, all the wonderful people who have joined us. I'm strong. Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Now, has Keoke started going to the courts? I mean, having been called to the bar, has Keoke started uh, going to the courts? Well, I, I've had two occasions to go to the court. Uh, but, you know, most people don't understand that law has various uh, aspects and variants. Uh, there are those who are specialists in litigation, that's, they are the ones who go to the court. There are those who engage in corporate law, there are those who engage in uh, civil litigation, criminal litigation, and so on. Um, I have been in the, my area of specialization and specialty is the intellectual property, that's IP, a kind of entertainment law. So um, uh, I'm trying to build my strengths in that area from the experience, practical experience I've gotten for myself in the entertainment industry in Nigeria for the past 30 something years. So um, going to court is not my primary area of concern does not mean I'm choosing, but it's uh, an area that um, uh, with the partnership I'm drawing and the strength I'm drawing from senior lawyers, those who have caught the bar before me, um, I'm trying to understand. We were warned on the day, subtly warned on the day of our call to bar that we must avoid going into practice immediately, which I think is the best advice being given to new weeks. We need to understand people so I'm, I'm understudying people. I'm understudying um, top lawyers, senior advocates, and so on. Um, I go to drink from their world of experience every day, and uh, it's paying off. So law is a very conservative profession. It's not something you, I mean, you're a lawyer yourself. It's not a profession you get into um, and think it's like the business of glamour, where the more advertised you are, the more you get uh, relevant. No, law is conservative. Most people in law are making their money, making their names, being quiet. So I, I want to remain in that channel of being quiet and being conservative. Wow, beautiful, beautiful. Now, my own law is still in the pipeline. You know, it hasn't been firmed up. So when it is firmed up, I will let you know. I just thought I should put that on record. Now, but taking you back, I need okay. you to tell us about your first day in court, you know, as a counsel. Was there any memorable or remarkable thing that happened that you'd like to share with us? I, no, I, I have not appeared as a counsel, but what, okay. I, what happened was that a, a judge of a court All right. uh, was, so, was so happy that I had uh, been called to the bar okay. and gave me a summon. I gave me a summon. <laughs> so I appeared. Yeah. in my wig and gown and appear before her. <laughs> so, she, she, she introduced me to all the lawyers present who have matters and so on. And that's you know you know one thing about one thing about appearance is that um, you you need you need you need is 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 uh, higher than what you see in the classroom. So uh, of course, you yeah. didn't tell me, but at least that dispels the butterflies. We appear before um, a judge in a, in a court. I mean, uh, so it, it was like it was like that for me, and I felt like um, when I look at the judge and look at the lawyers on the defense and the <laughs> respondent side, I, I I now remember what I was taught in law school, and the practice is the practical aspect of it. So it's quite. <laughs> uh, yes. Now the the the, the strong desire to go back to school and study law, what prompted it, what triggered it, what ignited that fire in you? Yeah, I, it's one question I have been asked recurrently. Um, I have always wanted to speak for those who have no voice. Oh. I just wanted to be a voice for those who are voiceless, 
for those who murmur, those who cannot speak out, those who do not know their rights. What I have done in television over the years, um, because if you find out, every drama is about light overshadowing darkness. Mm. And that is that there are people who are on the other side of the law, negative side. And there are people who have chosen to be on the right side of the law. They will okay. always have they will not, never, never have a new point. So they will always be, have divergent, divergent views. So I have always wanted to be on the side of the people who cannot speak. I've always wanted to be on the side of people who need advocacy, representation. There are people who are created. Just like if you look very well, those who make first class and two ones, most of them, if you ask them to talk in public and defend what they have, most of them can't. That's true. But they are capable of writing what they want. So there are people also in society who cannot just defend their actions. Just like there are people who cannot speak before a crowd. They know what they want, but they can't speak before a crowd. Call it state fright or it uh, cowardice, or it whatever it is. So those, such people need advocacy. Such people need people who can speak for them. This was what gave me the idea that I am not just going to be popular. I am going to defend, advocate for those who are voiceless, who can speak for themselves, and those who murmur. Wow. That's interesting. I've always, like I, like I said, I like, said uh, before my court, but, but I've always wanted to be a lawyer. In mm fact, -hmm. 1994-95, when the University of Abuja granted me uh, admission to read philosophy, I was angry. I was angry. You know, but at the end, I had to go read philosophy. It was law I wanted. So I've always wanted to be a lawyer. Mm -hmm. you know, so get, achieving that at 58 years was uh, a great one for me. I like and, that. Uh, as long as I've achieved uh, what I've always wanted, every other, every other about me. Now let's come back to your main forty. You know where you made your name, where you made your money, where fame and fortune found you. Your romance with acting. Why did you choose acting of all professions? As at the time you did over thirty years ago. Yeah, well, um, um, the thing is this. Sometimes you don't choose acting. Acting chooses you. <laughs> I like the story of uh, most, um, like, for instance, let me mention my colleague, Omotola Jalade Keine. Uh, you will read that she has she escorted a friend of hers to an auditioning uh, location. And she got there and she was called to come and read a role. I said, no, not the meal. Not my friend, carry me come. So make I escort him. So it's, most times it's acting that chooses you. And you can find out as well, Aaron, that most of the best actors you have in Hollywood did not read creative arts or theater arts. Hmm. So it is the talent that have been driving most of us. So in that wise, that means acting chose us. For me as a person, um, starting my career in Enugu in those days was the typical Nigerian sad commentary of looking for work. You write application, it's not working. And then you go to NCA, they say, you look like what you've been looking for. And they give you a script to read. And you read it and say, that's who we want. You stay there, fill a form, get your artist fee as of 1982, 83, no matter what you call it. And then they give you another role, you play. They give you another role, you play. You stop looking for work because you got work. <laughs> Me, particularly, got into acting. So some of us could be actors by by 
by by calling. Some could be by frustration. <laughs> some could be by. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like what I what when I when I preach to people, what I say about some pastors. Some are pastors by by theology, professional. Some are act, some are pastors by calling. Some are pastors by illness being cured by God. So some of us became actors by frustration, by looking for work, by calling, and so on. So you cannot count where I belong. <laughs> All right, I need you to tell us the most memorable thing that happened the first time you went on set. The first time ever uh, that you were on set. I, you know, sometimes we walk around thinking of uh, things and so on before. Be that as it may. I think I've had um, a very good um, career history. I'm still trudging, like a Trojan. I'm still trudging forward. Um, I'm one actor who has enjoyed the mercy of God. I'm one actor who has enjoyed uh, the goodness of this calling. Um, the experiences are varied. I've had very most things to say about the industry when it gets to uh you get on set and you hear things like uh you make the job easy a director tells you i think when we see people like you we know that talent varies we know that you were called to deliver this job you know so some of the things that make it memorable that you you on set and when you talk people want to learn people want to uh discover themselves even when you talk people now say i think say i don't start i don't say that now when i start you know these are the memorable things that I remember, but it's a very fulfilling feeling um uh experience uh, being called to be the author of acting. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, KOK has been acting for over 30 years now. What would you say has kept you going? Intellectual contentment. Mm. Let me not break it down. Let me not break it down. People see you from the presidency, from the National Assembly, to the civil society, to this area, to that area, those who hold the society, those who are important, those who are who feel less important, and they tell you the only reason I work in Hollywood is you. Please continue what you're doing. So when the high and mighty tell you always that you are the major general or lieutenant general in Nollywood. Please. You now ask yourself, the money I make is not commensurate to what a major general makes in the army. <laughs> you now ask yourself, do they respect me like they would respect a major general or a lieutenant general? Because if I check, if I check the salary of a major general, his um, allowances and so on, and the pertinences of office, what he gets, and his standing in the Nigerian society, I will not want to be a major general. I want to be. A, I don't want to be a lieutenant general because our industry is not. We are loved but not respected hmm. by those in. Nigeria. Some of them see actors, actresses as hand clappers, drum beaters, come and entertain us and go. That's no, that's the irony of the Nigerian situation. It's not like that. It's not like that. It's even in South Africa. It's not like that in India. It's not like that in America. Of course, you're aware as a, as a lawyer and as um, an influence, social influencer, influencer that. It will be an insult 
You don't contest an election with an actor in the United States. You, you will win. But in Nigeria, if I contest an election with anybody, they will vote for him, not because they want to vote for him, but because he has accumulated much wealth. Mm. So that's why I say they respect us, but don't, they, 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 they love us, but don't respect us. Mm. So when it gets to things to be done with cash, you can see where these guys put in their feet. Mm. So Nigeria is a wrong Nigeria, I say it again, Nigeria is a wrong place to be popular. <laughs> Don't forget, I'm not talking about I'm not talking about South Africa. I'm not even talking about Ghana here. If a governor is coming, if a governor is coming in Nigeria, they will tell the actor, go and sit at the back seat. Meanwhile, the actor is the one who commands the audience. A governor is just a politician. It's an insult to com 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 it's, it's an insult to compare my popularity and goodwill with a governor who's a politician. It's an insult. It's not like now comparing me with President Muhammad Buhari. He's not a celebrity. I'm the celebrity. <laughs> <laughs> it's an insult. I'm telling you this live video. It's an insult. You don't compare me with the president. He's a, he's a politician. I'm not a politician. I'm a celebrity. People celebrate me for what I have done. But in Nigeria, it's a different case. Let me, let me give you an idea. In 2010, President Gulag Jonathan gave me the national honor of member of the order of the Federal Republic. So with that courtesy, I use the protocol lounge at every airport. But you know in Nigeria, immediately you carry policemen. Nobody will really ask you, okay, who you be? So you have access to lounges. Just your country to be popular. No. So let me rest my case on that. But the fact of the matter is, um, the actor needs more respect and recognition in Nigeria. Uh, actors are never qualified with the money they make. They are qualified and qualified with the goodwill they have created. Mm. Interesting. If I, if I, if I. I'm looked for by the Directorate of State Security today. They know I'm popular. I can't hide for long. Where am I going to hide? <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, yes. Okay, okay. What are the attributes of a good actor? Number one, a good actor. Um, well, I think we have to deal with the words you have said, good and actor. Let's deal with what are the attributes of an actor before we talk about a good actor. All right. An actor is uh, one of the attributes an actor must possess is um, he must have passion for the job. All right. An actor must see himself as a role model. As a role model. An actor is one who sees his job as that which creates social relevance. Now, a good actor is that one who knows he has a job to do and he must live up to that role. A good actor is that person who knows that he must be a performer to be rated. Mm. A good actor is that one who knows that his life may be marred or made by the way he plays his role. A good actor must know that he's a social influencer. A good actor must know that he is an agenda, agenda setter. If, and by, what I mean by that is, if you want to set a country on fire, you can make a movie and set a country on fly, fire. So the actor must understand that you can set agenda. So, if you understand that, then a good actor must go home and study his role very well. Wow. 
when an actor stories his role, he becomes it. He internalizes his lines, and it becomes part of him. When I did, when I did, um, when I did um, um, the movie in 1999, um, the one I was Igwe Nana. Um, I remember the name along the line. Kingdom. My hand, uh, Lost Kingdom. Yes, thanks. You see, you've been part of the job, you know. Ah. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, you know, I had this. Uh, yes. I had this hand. Yes. Yeah. I remember. My hand hung for one month. When I was talking to people, I unconsciously put my hand like this. I didn't know. So, the, so if an actor recognizes that he's an agenda setter, a social influencer, that what he does and the way he lives his life could either make or mar somebody, you live right. Mm. So having said all this, there are more ingredients, there are more characteristics. Let me stick to the ones I've just mentioned. All right. What does KOK like most about being an actor? Here, yeah, uh, being an actor affords you an opportunity to live the, the best life. <laughs> in the movies, uh, you sleep in the best hotels, you eat the best food by force. By force, I'm, I'm just saying the, this is the. I'm talking about the little area of it. I'll, I'll get to the bigger one. All right. You're paid to keep best women. You're paid to have fun. But on the other side of it, what does Kyoke like about being an actor? Being an actor gives you an opportunity that you will never have with a little audience. You can be talking to two million. You know, it, it just like you cannot estimate the number of people we're talking to on this program now. That's true. From all over the world. Some of them just heard that KOK is going to be on your platform. Program. Yeah. They were waiting. Even when we didn't join at they are good at nine yeah. So it, it, it's not easy to have people who have not seen your face before, who have only seen you in the movies, have that patience that something may be wrong with the connection and they are waiting. So this is what KOK likes about the movies. People begin to like you, begin to follow you, begin to sympathize with you. Begin to like you for who you are from all parts of the world so it gives you believability if for instance there's somebody watching us on this platform now who is for instance in russia in united states and all over the civilized world and you tell the person um okay when you arrive in nigeria kanayo kanayo um has made arrangement for a hotel and that's where you're going to be lodged. And he has also promised that you if you that person in the United States, that person in Russia will have that trust that is in safe hands, even without meeting me. That's what I enjoy about an actor. It gives you believability. Mm. You cannot act on that trust. Then being an actor gives me a platform and an opportunity to meet those to be mentored, those to be learned from, the high and the mighty. So it's always a huge opportunity to tap into areas. People want to begin to look at you by what you are on TV. Like for instance, to most people, I'm a ritualist. <laughs> But for most people who know, they say KOK okay, no fit hampers himself. That KOK okay, cannot even see a slight of blood. I mean, you have been my friend for over 20 something years. You should, that's, you can even write that's after true. my that's chronicle true. about me. That's true. <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say I'm harmless. I'm not going to praise myself. But the fact of the matter is, I'm opposite of what I play on TV. That's true. Yeah. And people should understand. I know people. That's why another thing. You know, when you begin to tell people I have only two cars, they say I lie. 
Uh, with all this, you really do. Look, I'm playing a role. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on telling people, just like others have told me, when you play a role very well, and people call you by that name, you've done it well. Oh. Oh, man. So, so, some people see me as a nice guy. Some people say, ah, I'll allow you. Just like somebody was telling the hackers, the guys who hacked my phone, okay, okay, we we'll use all of you for ritual. <laughs> Maybe you are listening on this program. Uh, I'm going to also tell them, by the time I consult the gods, <laughs> all of them will be running into a monkey. <laughs> they don't do Maybe in three days. Huh. Uh, I'm not, I'm not, uh, you know what the Bible says is to pray for our enemies. The Bible did not tell us what kind of prayer to pray for our enemies. All right. Let's sit on that. All right. It's quite good. Yeah.